What we're going to do next is take this first chiral molecule that we looked at and actually draw it and visualize it in three dimensions because right now you know everything's drawn as flat so you don't know really what the 3D structure is. When you're drawing a chiral center in 3D you always want two bonds in the plane and you draw those as just straight lines so you know, here could be two bonds in the plane. You want one bond out, which will be a wedge. And you want one bond back. Which we draw as a dash. And when drawing this, a really, really important note to take here Always draw your dash and wedge coming off the large angle of the bond. So what does that mean? I'll show you two versions here. Okay, here's your large angle. Here's the small angle. Never draw these groups in the small angle of the bond. If you draw it like that, and like that, that's wrong. What's correct is to take them and draw them from the large angle of the bond. It doesn't really matter which side you put which on though. So be careful about that because these structures down here imply the tetrahedral nature. This implies some weird pyramid-like structure. All right, so now let's take this base molecule up here, and I'm going to keep the H and the OH in the plane. You could pick, actually, any of the two groups. It doesn't matter, but I've decided now I'm going to keep those two bonds in the plane. So we'll draw that. And then I need to dash on a wedge group. So maybe I'll put the bromine on the wedge and the chlorine on the dash. Notice, even though I've drawn this kind of um, rotated around a bit, the dash and the wedge groups are still coming off the large angle of this bond. Okay, but it would also be perfectly valid to draw the chlorine coming out and the bromine going back. Here's my chiral center. And the, really the difference in these two is just that the two groups are inverted at the chiral center. These two molecules are a pair of stereoisomers. And next we're even going to learn more specifically what these two stereoisomers are called. Um, they're actually called enantiomers. 
we can use a simple calculation to figure out the maximum number of stereoisomers that you could potentially have. The calculation for the maximum number of stereoisomers is you take 2 to the power of n, where n is the number of chiral centers, and later on we'll even learn that that n can equal the number of stereocenters. So for this particular molecule, there's one chiral center, so we do 2 to the first equals 2 stereoisomers. So as you gain in the number of chiral centers, the number of stereoisomers increases exponentially. As you progress learning stereochemistry, I want you to get comfortable working with molecular models. So here I have the two stereoisomers from the previous slide drawn in, and then I have molecular models of each of these built. And what I want you to see is you know, we have a white sphere, that's the hydrogen. So we have the hydrogen in each one. And then we have the OH group, that's the red sphere. So there's our OH group. These bonds represent the plane. And then the blue sphere is representing the bromine. And on this first model, the bromine's coming out towards us, and the chlorine, which is green, is pointed away from you. So think of you know, this as the plane of the page, and then going behind is the chlorine, coming out is the bromine. So there's the chlorine. On the other stereoisomer, we have the H and the OH in the same relative orientations but the green chlorine is now coming out, the blue bromine is going back. So what's the difference in these two molecules? Well, one, we know that the two groups, the OH, or the bromine and the chlorine, those are inverted. Okay, but in terms of defining the relationship between these two, the first thing we're going to say is that they're non-superimposable. Okay, now what that basically means is if we take one of these molecules and try to superimpose it on the other, well, the H and the OH, those line up and those superimpose, but the chlorine and the bromines, those don't line up, they won't superimpose. No matter what you try, you can never get these molecules to perfectly superimpose on one another. Another way to almost think about non-superimposable is just non-identical. Okay, but also, if we start to you know, work with these molecules a little bit, and we look at maybe a relationship between them, if I spin this one around, these two molecules are perfect mirror images of one another. So if you had a mirror right here between them, they're reflecting one another. There's a mirror plane right here. So these are mirror images of one another. And you can show those mirror images from a variety of viewpoints. It doesn't have to be these particular atoms. You know, I could flip these around and show the mirror image here. Or, here. So there's a lot of ways to see uh, that they are mirror images of one another. So stereoisomers 
that fall into this definition, non-superimposable mirror images, we call these enantiomers.